that without further ado, because one of the things, Keith and I do go on a bit, so we have to keep to time, Keith. So here's our first cruise, back to Princess Cruises and the Caribbean Princess. And uh, here's John to tell you more. Princess Cruises first set sail in 1965 with a single ship cruising to Mexico. Today, the line has grown to become the third largest cruise line in the world. Princess is known for being a bit of an industry innovator because over the years they've introduced so many new features and experiences on board their ships that have been so popular, other cruise lines are now copying them. Among them are affordable balconies on many of the ship's outside cabins, as well as 24-hour dining, and a choice of dining venues and flexible dining times. Princess ships also debuted features such as Movies Under the Stars and the Sanctuary Adults Only Oasis. In the fitness centre you'll find all the latest equipment, plus a range of classes including cycling, pilates, yoga, stretch and abs. But if chilling out and being pampered is more your thing, then you might want to head up here, to the tranquil environment of the Lotus Spa. With a menu of dozens of calming and rejuvenating treatments, the Lotus Spa is guaranteed to be one of the highlights of your cruise. Throughout the day on your Princess Cruise, the chefs are busy preparing your next memorable meal. All bread, cakes and pastries are baked three times a day. All sauces are prepared by hand. Speciality restaurants include Sabatini's, Princess's signature Italian restaurant. The Crown Grill offers a variety of premium beef and seafood dishes. But tonight's formal night and I've decided to eat in the main restaurant. As I'm booked on any time dining, I can just turn up and eat at whatever time I like. Princess are known for their dynamic and exciting production shows with some of the largest casts at sea. Tonight we've got a 70s theme with Blame It On The Boogie. All shows are produced in-house and feature lively music and stunning choreography, featuring one of the largest casts at sea, as well as shows you can enjoy a night of stand-up comedy, a game show, a sing-song in the piano bar, a romantic dance, or just a quiet night with friends in a lounge bar. Something completely different. How about a movie under the stars? It's a signature feature of all princess ships. It's a great way to end the day. I tell you, when you when you see um, film footage like that, it really you know reminds you. Or if you've never been on a cruise before, it, it shows you just how much there is to do. You you are never bored. Absolutely. For, for minutes, are you? And it's very easy to take all of it for granted. But these are you know when when you when you play, when you place it against what you get in a hotel, oh, yeah. the amount that you get more in sense of the quality of the service and the fact that you unpack once and you're just in different places every day. Even like the, the you know you said the, the the movies under the stars that you yeah. saw Jonathan in at the end there. Just the way you can go and see concerts and, and massive films every night with free popcorn. It's just it is, everything it is you amazing. do is added on. It, it, some friends of mine finally went on a cruise. I'm in the 60s, and now you know it's like, oh, why didn't we do this years ago? So you know, I hope today, while we've got such amazing prices, I hope you book maybe your very first cruise. Anyway, let's show you where you're going to be cruising to. Uh, starting from Southampton, which is great because that means it's really easy. You can take as much luggage as you like with you, and we're making our way over to uh, Zeebrugge. Zeebrugge, that's right, your gateway to Brussels if you want to go there, uh, and of course that's where. Uh, you've got all the wonderful bureaucracy <laughs> but also I would recommend heading into uh, Bruges itself go and get lost in Bruges it's absolutely incredible the whole city centre itself is it's basically an UNESCO World Heritage Site uh, you can just wander around and it's famous for its unexpected array of different museums quite amazing Sean you've got uh, the Great Diamond Museum you've got Choco's Story where you can all learn about chocolate and we all know of course that Belgium and chocolate uh, are two things very much synonymous with each other and you can go to something called the, the Fritz Museum, which is dedicated to the Belgium fry. Believe it or not, the Belgians claim to invent the chip, to invent the fries. I didn't know that. Yeah, so again, all these museums, they're, they're, they're really <laughs> good fun. Uh, apart from that, you're seeing some of the images that you can just wander around this amazing place. I, I thought it was beautiful. It's an incredible, yeah. incredible place to go. And if, if you've been to Bruges b uh, before, maybe then go out to Flanders Fields uh, and go and see some of the wonderful uh, places and areas where the sacrifices were made during the, the two great wars. Uh, incredible incredible place and great port. And just back to the chocolate, you can get a chocolate anything there, can't you? <laughs> you can get actually a chocolate anything, yeah. <laughs> so, relaxing day at sea, chance to enjoy that wonderful ship, as we saw Jonathan doing, and then 
you're hitting Copenhagen, Copenhagen as it's pronounced by many. Um, and I know this is an absolutely cracking port. You've got an overnight here, which is even better. Uh, and this is a city of spires where people rather than cars set the, uh, set the pace. It's an amazing city to go and explore. It's known as the Venice of the North because of the amount of water around it uh, and canals. I would say definitely if you've not been there before, heading to the town centre to do one of the open top tour buses. Don't miss out on Tivoli Gardens, about 400,000 different flowers, loads of street performances. Uh, this wonderful street here is where I got my first ever tattoo tattoo ollies down there fantastic place to go and relax uh, I recommend uh, and if you're gonna go there for food wise we all know about Danish pastries but what about Smaller's board which is their wonderful open face sandwiches and of course a little mermaid uh, the little mermaid's there to go and see it but I wouldn't go out of your way to see the little mermaid if you haven't been before because it will be a letdown compared to everything else there's really? so much more to see yeah including uh, Friedensburg Castle uh, which is a beautiful 18th century Baroque Palace uh, and again a residence of the Queen there we go some of the great castles, that was Rosenburg Castle as well. Incredible place. Uh, from here, we're heading off into Helsingborg, and this is great. Now, we don't normally feature this port, Sean. Quite excited to see this. You will instantly fall in love, literally, with just a, a breath of the refreshing sea air. Uh, and it's full of great beaches, refreshing public baths. You can go and stroll through the, what they call the Sofiro Palace, which is beautiful. If you want a great view, climb up the Karnan Castle. It gives you great views across the whole harbour. Um, here is where you go to see Kronberg Castle, which was immortalised, of course, as the fictional setting of Shakespeare's Hamlet. So if you I want to go and you know, hold up the skull and say, alas, poor Yorick, I knew him well, <laughs> you can do it just there. Just take your own skull. And um, the Odesund Bridge is nearby as well. That's a fantastic place. It's one of the longest uh, road and railway bridges in Europe, a 10-mile structure. You can go and see that. The other great castle I recommend is Helsingborg Castle, which has got a beautiful medieval, uh, medieval tower and great extensive fortifications. But it's a cracking place, Helsingborg. It will really surprise you. You'll go Helsingware, and afterwards you'll go, I love that place. Um, and then finally, we're into Oslo. Oslo. Oh, I love this place. I went Scottish there for a minute. I got so passionate. <laughs> you did, um, didn't you? I did. I really did. <laughs> That's what I do when I get excited. Um, this is beautiful. This is forest clad slopes plummeting into island studded fjords. It's Scandinavia's oldest capital city. Again, it all works around the water taxi. It's all based on the water. It's a beautiful place. Uh, and it's one of the largest capital cities in terms of area, not in terms of population. Akershus Castle which is just overlooks where you dock. This is it here. The gardens along here. Uh, from that, uh, from Akershus Castle, 14th century castle, and the views back out into the fjords and of the city are oh. absolutely stunning. I'm just, uh, just looking at some of the gardens coming up now, because I'm really into my gardening, and these look amazing. Oh, you, you would love this. You'd spend the whole day just there. Yeah, sure. You've got the Viking Ship Museum there as well, with some of the oldest Viking ships oh. in the world. Uh, your Vigilant Park is full of amazing sculptures, amazing, huge, life-size sculptures. Um, you can go and see the National Gallery, where the screen painting is there, in you know, the original. Uh, and you've got the Nobel Peace Prize. Uh, um, the Nobel Peace Prize Museum as well, right on the uh, on the front, which is incredible. So much to see and do. Really brilliant place, Oslo. Uh, and then a, a final day at sea, just to enjoy that gorgeous ship, of course, and then back to Southampton. Um, amazing value. Don't forget, um, this is going to include your all-inclusive beverage package. Uh, you need to book before the 30th of uh, June to get that, of course, as well. We've also got the uh, unlimited soda package and up to $75 on board spend as well. Um, an amazing deal, but a beautiful ship as well. Now, Keith, one thing that we, we both know, that anyone that is cruising from Southampton, um, it's fine if you live near Southampton, but for those of you that maybe live a bit further afield, it takes me about three and a half hours to get to Southampton. Some of you might take six, seven hours. To make your journey a little bit less stressful, we'd recommend staying at the Marriott. And we're going to be there next week, actually, aren't we? Absolutely, we are. We're going to be there on, on, on Sunday. Uh, this time next week, yes. we'll be there as part of that wonderful show, which we'll give you details on a little bit later. Um, but it's a fantastic hotel. And, of course, you get your parking included. You do. And yeah. your transfers as well. And your transfers. The guy with a hat drives you. Yeah, it's, honestly, it's, it's really worth it. Yeah. We get a special deal uh, with Planet Cruise uh, from £70 per person per night. Anyway, here's my twin to tell you more. <laughs> Planet Cruise have a great partnership with the Marriott Mean Valley Four Star Hotel here in Southampton. Bed, breakfast, free car parking, transfers to and from the port are actually all included. Now I arrived earlier yesterday 
I had someone take care of my bags, I went for a swim, I had the most amazing night's sleep and I've just finished off a hearty breakfast. And now, with my car safely parked, I'm about to take the chauffeur-driven shuttle to Southampton Port, which is a mere 12 miles away. And then when my cruise is over, they'll drop me off here and I can drive safely home. Was oh, it really worth doing that, you know? And uh, just to remind you, there's the details, 969 for this one. All of those freebies, the drinks package, the soda package for kids, and up to $75 on board spend as well. Family of four, bear in mind, this could be half term for many of you, uh, at just 2999 And excursion-wise, if you've never booked any of these before, well, you can get up to 60% saving by booking directly through Planet Cruise as well. Planetcruise.co.uk forward slash TV, of course.